When Christopher Columbus first encountered the people of the New World, he was deeply moved. For their part, the Indians thought that Columbus and his hailers were gods who had come from heaven. But in a single generation, the peaceful kingdom of the Indians, which Columbus first saw, would be gone forever, wasted by disease, slavery, torture, and war. This world Columbus had found was in fact a very ancient place. People had lived here for centuries, included the Sayex Indians. Today there are three main groups of Sioux Indian tribe, including Dakota, Lakota, and Lakota. The Sioux Indians came to North America for about 30,000 years ago. They were one of the first Native American nations to inhabit North America. The Sioux Indians was a huge nation made up of seven strong tribes. The tribes was given the name Sioux that actually means little snake. The Sioux Indians are what we call Nanamic, meaning that they would never really stayed in one place for a very long time. They were always traveling and it was typically to follow the pattern of the buffalo, thinking that wherever they went there would be food and clothing. The Sioux Indians are different from other Native American nations by the social and cultural norms that made up their way of life. Sioux mostly used buffalo, deer and elk skin for their clothes. The women wore long deer skin or elk skin dresses and Sioux men wore breech clothes, leggings and buckskin shirts. They also wore moccasins on their feet and buffalo hide robes in bad weather. Sioux warriors and chiefs were well known for the Native American Indian headdresses, but this wasn't something that they wore every day. Both men and women had their hair long. When they cut their hair, it meant that they were in mourning. There were many traditional hairstyles, but the most common one were long braids. On special occasions, the Sioux painted their face and arms with bright colors and animal designs. They used different pat patterns for war paint and festive decorations. Today, some Sioux people still wear braided vests and moccasins, but most of them wear normal clothes like jeans instead of breech clothes. And they only wear feathers in their hair on special occasions. The Sioux Indian culture is very unique. You can see it in how the families live, gender roles, spirituality, food and attire. The Sioux Indian families have always been deeply devoted to their families. They are very fond of their children, and children rarely get punished and is very high prioritized. Historically, female and male roles were very traditional. Men were the providers, they did the hunting while the women ruled the home. These roles are still the same today. Religion is also a large part of the Sioux Indian culture. The Sioux Indians are very spiritual. Some practice Christianity, while others still follow beliefs that are more traditional. These traditional beliefs include the belief in one all-powerful God, Wakantanka, or the Great Mystery. They believe that Wakantanka created all things. They also believe that everything has its own spirit. Another spiritual figure that is very important for the Sioux Indians is the White Buffalo Calf Maiden. She first appeared to the Sioux Indi Indians in human form but she was also a white buffalo. Her coming taught the Sioux that those who live in ignorance and have evil in their hearts might be destroyed by their own actions. The white buffalo calf maiden taught the Sioux a great deal about spirituality. The Sioux culture can also be found in the food they eat and the clothes they wear. In the past, Sioux Indians ate buffalo, bear, deer, antelope, turkey and hens. They share the food with the entire tribe. Today, you can find that the Sioux Indians still use some of the same ingredients in their food. Legend of the White Buffalo has been passed down for generations, for at least 2000 years. Depending on which Sioux tribe, the Dakota, the Nakota or the Lakota, the story of the legend has several versions, but they all have the same outcome. The legend says that long ago two young warriors were hunting, when out of nowhere they came across a beautiful woman dressed in white buckskin. The warriors recognized her as a Wakan, or sacred being. Return to your people and tell that I am coming, she said to the warriors. This holy woman presented the Lakota people with the sacred pipe which showed how all things were connected. She taught the people seven ways to pray through ceremonies. Before leaving she told them that within her were 
there four ages and that she would be returning at the end of every fourth age to restore harmony and spirituality to a troubled land. She walked a short distance as she looked back towards the people and sat down. When she arose, she had become a black buffalo. Walking a little further, the buffalo lay down, this time erasing as a yellow buffalo. The third time, the buffalo walked a little further, and this time arose as a red buffalo. Walking a little further, it rolled on the ground and rose one last time as a white buffalo calf. The sun dance was the most practiced ritual by the Native American tribes, and the ritual was one of the most important religious ceremonies of the Sioux. It was held once a year, in the months of June or July. The sun dance lasted four to eight days, starting at the sunset of the final day of preparation and ending at sunset. The ceremony involved warriors being pierced through the chest or the back with a bone from a buffalo. The dancers would either be fastened on a tree or dance with a skull dragging behind them. Each one of the warriors presented himself to a holy or a medicine man. The holy or the medicine man inserted a bone through the skin of the warrior. The bone was attached to a long rope that was connected to the center of the arena. The task was to break loose from the rope, and to be able to free himself, he had to tear the bone through the skin. A task that the most courageous may require many hours of torture. The idea of the dance was to remove the buffalo skull and the bone from their bodies. The object of the sun dance is to offer personal sacrifice as a prayer for the benefit of one's family and community. To get food, the people hunted and gathered. They moved frequently to follow the buffalo herd to keep having access to food. They also hunted deer and other animals and they gathered fruits and vegetables. Some of them also grew crops on their lands. The three most important crops were maize, beans and squash, also called the Three Sisters, and some even grew pumpkins. The food were often traded between the various tribes, so they all had access to different food sources. Sioux women also dried buffalo meat and made jerky. First they pounded the meat into powder, and then they added animal fats and let the mix dry. The jerky could be stored for two years without it getting ruined. This was a good food source because of its lasting power. The history of Native Americans in North America dates back thousands of years. The Sioux Indians fought several wars against the American government in the 1800s. In the end they lost. They lost most of their lands, the men had no way to support their families and it got worse. The government took their children too. They put them in boarding schools far away to learn to speak the white tongue, worship the white god and live the white way, and to feel shame about being a Sioux Indian. But it did not work. The Sioux Indians were never accepted as whites. The government still ran their affairs as if they were children, telling them how to use the land. To this day they remain extremely poor as they have been for over a hundred years. Today most Sioux people live in Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska and Saskatchewan. They are among the poorest people in America. They live at reservations. And in the reservations most men have no work and many of the Sioux Indians turn to drinking or drugs. Most of the families live in poverty. There are big families that live in small houses and some families even without power or water. They don't eat real and healthy food so many of them become fat or diabetics. Way too many women get cervical cancer, and half of the kids drop out of high school. There are many Sioux Indians that become suicide, and the men are at least twice as likely to wind up in prison as white men. There are about 150,000 Sioux Indians in the world today. Only 14% of these speak their own Sioux language, mostly because they weren't allowed to teach it in school until 1978. Native American chiefs are highly honored positions within each North American Indian tribe. An elder that is considered to be the most wise and effective leader will rise to the rank of chief. Native American chiefs have accomplished some of the most important feats in the history. They have led entire civilizations, driven out enemy occupiers, and led their people to lands where the hunting was good and the ground fertile. Some of the most important chiefs in the Sioux tribe were Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, and Red Cloud. 
Sitingwell was a chief and a spiritual leader of the North American Indian people who Papa Siu. He was also a famous medicine man. The 25th of June, 1876, he led 3,500 Sioux and Cheyenne warriors against parts of the U.S. 7th Cavalry at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Crazy Horse was a Native American war leader of the Oglala Lakota. He took up arms against the U.S. federal government to fight against encroachments on the territories and way of life of the Lakota people, including leading a war to victory at the Battle of the Little Bighorn in June 1876. Red Cloud was a very strong war leader and also a chief of the Oglala Lakota. He is known for the Red Clouds War, which lasted from 1866 to 1868. He led in the late 1860s the resistance against American forces that the government sent to Wyoming and Montana to build roads and forts.